Hello, this is Professor Gavor, and I'm going to give an overview of uh, project management. This is used uh, primarily in our graduate course, SPNM 5413 Project Management, and it's the opening lecture there. But I also use it in the chapter, uh, in a session in, in Undergraduate Operations Management, uh, BSC 2510. When we cover project management, so we're not going to talk about this course so much, but we're going to talk about what is a project, why project management, and getting started, which is the project charter. Um, the graduate course was redesigned around uh, getting a certified associate in project management (CAPM). It's the first level of certification from the Project Management Institute. And they quote it as an asset that will distinguish you in a job market and enhance your credibility and effectiveness to work on project teams. You only need a certain amount of uh, 23 hours of uh, project management training to do this and 1,500 hours of project management experience. I think it's either or. So this certification is probably best if you want to get a first certification or thinking about uh, going into project management. Here's some more information on it. It costs you like, uh, you can become a student member, but it, and I think it's $75, which is the difference between the price of taking the exam or not. And I think they charge you just to uh, have some skin in the game. So if you'd like to manage larger projects and gain responsibility and add project management to your skill, you could look for the certificate if you want. Um, so well, I was right, it's, it's 1,500 hours of project management experience or 23 hours of project management education, uh, which in the undergraduate course, you won't get 23 hours. You'll have like three hours, two hours. Uh, so there's another 21 hours of training you need to take, which if we offer the graduate course, I could offer it to undergraduates to, uh, they could take it as an undergraduate course and then sit in on the exam. So the project management professional, as I told you uh, earlier, is a gold standard. Um, the prerequisites are a bit daunting. You have to have 7,500 hours of leading or directing projects, 35 hours of project management training, or 4,500 hours of leading and directing projects with, if you have a four-year degree. You know, the first one is you need a high school diploma or associate's degree, and then you need 7,500 hours. There's 2,000 working hours in a year. So that's like three and three quarters years. So most of uh, um, four years of project management experience, and then 35 hours of training. The four, uh, but if you have a college degree, you need 4,500 hours, which is two and a quarter years of, of project management experience and 35 hours of training. Um, CAPM is doable as a first step. It tells an employer, I want to manage products, and as you manage products, you can get the PM, PMP, which is a, it really is a gold standard. Uh, we're not doing that, and we're not doing that. So what is a project? Well, what makes for a positive project experience? What makes for a negative project experience? And what is a project anyway? If this was a live lecture, we'd stop and answer those questions and get your feedback on it. What a project is, is a complex, non-routine, one-time effort limited by time, budget, resources, and performance specifications designed to meet a specific set of needs, pretty much as defined by the customer, or as you define them by the customer, for the customer. A major characteristics of a project it has to have an established objective, it has a defined lifespan with a beginning and an end, it requires across the organization participation. And sometimes it involves doing something never been done before. Other times it involves doing something you have done before, but each time is a little bit unique. Uh, has some specific time, cost, and performance requirements. Um, here's another, if it was a live lecture, we'd have a discussion about. Are projects different than regular work? Or are projects in addition to regular work? Or are projects a new, albeit temporary, full-time job? 
Well, to answer those questions, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, projects are can be different than regular are different than regular work. It's like in a class. If you have regular homework, regular discussion every week. Uh, if I give you a class project, well, I called it a project, so it's different than that routine regular work. Is it in addition to regular work? Well, it certainly is in the class. I mean, you have your regular weekly work, but then I assign you a three-week, four-week project on top of it, and that becomes in addition to regular work. But if the project is huge, I may take you out of your regular work and just have you do your project and work on this project because the project is so important. So oftentimes if we're building a new factory, that's a project, a huge new factory. There's going to be some people that are taken out of their normal jobs and it's their full-time job building this. Other people are going to do it in addition to their regular work. I mean, it's got to be related to their regular work or else they wouldn't be picked for the project. A program versus a project. Well, a program is a series of coordinated, related, multiple projects that can continue on over an extended time and are intended to achieve a goal. Um, a higher level group of projects targeted at a common goal. A project, completion of a required course in project management. Program, completion of all courses required for a business major. Another example would be, uh, if you recall the space program that put uh, the man on the moon. You had the Gemini program, you had, uh, or, or the Mercury program, the Gemini program, the Apollo program. The one, two, and three man uh, capsules and launch vehicles that eventually got a man to the moon. Within the Gemini, uh, Mercury program and Gemini program, there were various launches. Mercury 1, 2, they named that for famous numbers. Uh, Gemini 1, 2, etc. Apollo through, I think, Apollo 16. Um, Apollo 13, they made a famous movie about it. Each one of those particular missions was a project all in its own. They were related in that they were still space launches, so there were a lot of similarities, but each time was somewhat different because they had different objectives and they wanted to learn from the last time they did the project. Um, projects and programs, a nuclear submarine, uh, putting in a new computer system, um, a, a new warehouse, or just simply planning a Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, and we'll talk about these a little bit. Uh, projects and programs, a nuclear submarine, definitely a program because you have a class of submarines of which you're going to build more of them. And uh, each one you're building is a project. Uh, you have to design and build the hull, design and build the reactor, design and build the drivetrain, design and build the missiles, design and build the electronics, design and build all the other amenities that go into a nuclear submarine. A new computer system. Well, it's both program and project. Uh, the way we used to, uh, I, I was involved in, in implementing SAP in the Latin America division of Colgate Palmolive. The program was implementing SAP. Each implementation, geography by geography. So our first uh, was a project in itself. So we had a program to implement SAP across all of Colgate Palmolive. We had a program to implement SAP in the Latin America division. Our first project was to implement it in Uruguay and then move to uh, other countries. We moved uh, to Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Argentina, Chile. Um, then we moved to the Central American countries, and we saved the big boys, Mexico and Brazil, for last. So we had this, this way to go. We built a business case. We looked at the as-is and to-be process. We did configuration. We did data cleansing, lots of training. We went live. We'll go live. It doesn't work right away, so you got to fix things. A new warehouse. It's pretty much a project, unless you did it like I did, where we had a program to renew all of our warehouse houses in the Latin America division of Colgate Palmolive. And uh, 
where we had a standard design of warehouses and we scaled it depending on the country we were going to for the size of that business. So you have to look at the detailed transaction analysis, the flooring, the building design and construction, the internal design, the racking, the material handling, and the transition from the old warehouse to the new warehouse after you built it. You think a Thanksgiving dinner is not a project? Try putting one on. You've got to have all the food done at the same time. Uh, you can't bake the turkey. You want the turkey to come out of the oven shortly before you serve. So if it takes three, four hours to bake a turkey, you've got to put it in and you're serving at two o'clock in the afternoon. You've got to put it in at nine o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning, depending on the size of the turkey. And then it comes out. Um, do you want to set the table just in time? No, that's something you can do ahead of time. You can set the table the day before. And many of you have seen your, you know, have been conscripted by wives and mothers to do exactly that. Uh, I can do the shopping ahead of time. I don't want to wait till all the last day. I can make or buy the pumpkin pie. Probably buying it is easier. I can make or buy the gravy. I can make or buy the mashed potatoes. I can actually make or buy the whole meal. But I got to plan the menu. I've got to do all of that kind of stuff. And everything has to happen right at the time that I plan to serve. Well, actually, it doesn't all have to happen because if you're giving hors d'oeuvres first, uh, those have to happen before the main course and before the dessert. So it's a project, especially if you have like 20 people. It's no, no easy thing to do. So are projects different than regular routine work? They can be. They can be in addition to or they can be in place of. Uh, regular routine work. Taking class notes, uh, entering sales receipts into accounting ledger, uh, responding to a customer supply chain request. Projects, you know, they, routine repetitive work in school is taking class notes. Not all do it. Uh, or writing a term paper. Term paper is a project. Uh, some people's pl project planning results in uh, wait until the night before it's due and um, to give myself five hours of like insane crazy working uh, to get it done or pull an all night or maybe it takes 10 hours. Um, daily entry of sales receipts into an accounting ledger. Putting up a sales kiosk is a project for a professional accounting meeting. It's a one time only, you know, you do it every time you have a professional accounting meeting. Uh, responding to a supply chain request. Uh, determining a supply chain information system, developing a supply chain information system is a project. Uh, practicing scales on a piano or any instrument, writing a new piano piece is a project. Routine manufacture of an Apple iPod or iPhone, designing an iPod or iPhone that is two by four inches, interfaces with the PC and stores 10,000 songs. Okay, so that's an old example. No one has an iPod anymore. Uh, attaching tags on a manufactured product. Uh, wire tag projects for GE and Walmart. Uh, maybe using RFID or something like that as a project to make that work. What are the risks or issues to manage when a project is in addition to regular routine work or project? Um, the challenge is to make sure that the people have the time to do what's necessary. There is a strong um, pull from their bosses to, to their regular job takes priority over the project. When a project is in place of regular routine work, uh, is getting everybody organized and trained and moving on it. What are the issues and risks of uh, the same or different for large corporations or small non, non startup nonprofits? I think they're the same, but it really is dependent somewhat on the scale of the project. A Thanksgiving dinner well, the risk will seem the same as a nuclear submarine, but obviously the nuclear submarine is way, way more complex than uh, hosting a Thanksgiving dinner. So why project management? Projects are not routine, regular work. If not planned, budgeted, and well-managed, well, the project simply won't get done. And if it gets done, it will take longer and most likely exceed the budget. Project management is a process, which is why it's often part of operations. 
<clears throat> all projects have a life cycle consisting of at least four steps. There's so many models. We're probably going to look at a four-step or 12-step model. I don't know. Uh, the life cycle depends on the industry, the book that you use to learn project management, the consultant, or the type of the project. Um, some farm, farm, pharma companies have uh, a 12-step model that's probably somewhat mandated by the government to make sure that they do the right things to make sure we get a safe vaccine for the COVID-19 virus, which they're fast tracking, which is always dangerous. The simple four-step model. Initiate. What is the challenge or problem? What are we setting out to do? How should we go about it? The planning part. And then making sure that once you got the initiated it and planned it, uh, can we control it? Are we on time? Are we doing it uh, according to our plan? And then the close, finish the project, accept, uh, assess how we did, and cap capture lessons learned in case it's a project that you might have to dust off and do again later. So if we look at initiate and plan the project, initiate, recognize what a project should be that a project should be done, needs to be done. Determine what must be accomplished. What are the goals? What does it look like when you're done? Uh, launch the project with a project charter. We're gonna talk more about project charter. Assign a project manager with the authority to select his team members. Then plan, develop a detailed plan for the project. That includes a task list, a budget, a risk plan, schedule, resource assignment, communication plan, change control process. Uh, this may seem too detailed. Let's fix that. Seem too detailed, but it really isn't. You can't be detailed enough oftentimes in the project. Once the project sponsor approves the plan, uh, it becomes a project baseline. And the baseline could easily change because you learn more about it. If it's the first time you're ever doing something, your plan is going to be good, but it's probably not going to be the final plan. It's going to change and evolve as you go. If you're building your 10th nuclear submarine of a specific class, you've already had lessons learned, you've done it before, you're probably going to do it faster because you're used to it, and you've got it more down to a routine. But the first one, it's uh, if you're proposition. Control. You begin the work. Um, the technical work is performed according to the plan, and you keep track of your variances, things that don't happen on time or happen sooner. And you want to keep the, the whole point is to keep the project on track. The project management manager is the juggler. He coordinates, communicates the project team and management, which is the stakeholders in the project, to make sure everything is done correctly. And then uh, there's three distinct activities in the close. Handoff. Ensure that the deliverable are handed off to the people that are supposed to get them, the customers of the project. Make sure that the hard-earned lessons learned during the project are passed on to others should they be doing similar or just project management in general, similar projects, or will be doing the same project but uh, maybe with some alterations. And then celebrate, reward the team and celebrate success. Now, there's a few basics to understand. Think of a project as any undertaking with a start and a defining endpoint. It should be specific and well-defined. You have this triple constraint. You're trying to have the best project results possible, highest quality. Probably in the middle of this, there should be a queue for quality. Now there's three things. Schedule. I want to get it done by a certain time. I want it to cost at or less a certain amount. And I want certain technical specifications. I want to achieve a certain, so I have the time, I have the cost, and I have what I want the final result to be like, the specifications of what you're going to get done. This is interesting because uh, within this triangle is a project scope, defines boundaries of the project in terms of technical requirements or specifications and the limits on the time and the cost. 
you want to hit all the technical specifications. You want to get it done before or on time, on time or before, and you want to hit the budget or cost less, right? So it's the constraints that define the project plan. Without limits on money, resources, or time, there would be little need for project management. Well, we'll just get it done. There was a uh, cathedral in, in Spain that they started in the 1700s, and I think they just finished in a, earlier this century. Crazy. I mean, they had no project plan, and I think they, as we collect money and we have money, we'll do the next phase. Uh, they've been having church in there a long time, but the, the cathedral was not done. But in real life, there's a need to get the work done faster, cheaper, and better. The tighter the constraints, the greater the need for project management. So project management is getting the work done on time, within budget, and according to specifications. You really want to hit all three. Now, we may talk about this later, but let me explain this now you've got to define which of those three is most important to manage. Oh, of course, yeah, they're all important to management. They want all three. No, no, no. One of them has to be more important, and you will find out when you ask the right kinds of questions. There are some managers that are going to tell you, yeah, 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 I want this, and I want that, and I want this, but if you spend a more than a penny more than the $2 million I've allocated to this project, it'll be your head. Hmm. Cost is the most important thing. So if push comes to shove, I'm not going to compromise cost. I'm going to either delay the schedule or I'm going to trade off some of the bells and whistles that, that my project may involve. I'm going to change the specifications and maybe not give everything you want. A space project, uh, uh, you know, you're launching a manned vehicle into space. Guess what's the most important part? Specifications. You want it to be a safe and successful launch. You don't want the thing to blow up. You don't want people to die or get injured in this um, in this project. So the specification is the most important thing. I'm willing to spend more as we learn and maybe if we haven't budgeted enough money we may have to do it. I may have to delay the schedule but the specification is the most important part. In many computer launches and believe me the other things are important in each of these cases. I mean, it's not like just spend all the money you want, but in the case of the space launch, safety is the most important single thing, and we are willing grudgingly to pay more money if we have to, but you got to make the case for it. When it comes to implementing SAP or Oracle in a large corporation, oftentimes it's scheduled, because most companies, most like a consumer products group, uh, I'll think of uh, when I worked in stationary supplies, back to school was the most important part of the year. It was Christmas time for a toy company. Well, I have to have my, I want to implement my SAP or Oracle software in the first quarter so that in the second quarter I can build up and make everything that I need to deliver in the third quarter. So I probably want to either implement my software in the fourth quarter of the year, after the back to the third or fourth quarter of the year after the back to school is done, or in the first quarter of the next year. So probably fourth quarter implementation is probably good, maybe third quarter implementation. So that schedule is important. I don't want to delay the schedule very much, but I'm willing to throw more money at it to adhere that schedule. And I'm willing to trade off some specifications to achieve that schedule. It's um, So you see an example of how this works. Believe me, management wants all three. I want it on time. I want it at or below budget. And I want to achieve all my specifications. But trust me, they have one of those that you cannot budge on at all. And you have to know what those are at the beginning of the project. What's the value of project management? establishes a single point of contact and accountability for the overall success of the project. I like to joke and say the project manor, manager is one throat to choke. If uh, the project's not going well, management can reach out and grab him by the throat and get his attention and say, what the heck's going on? 
It focuses on meeting customer needs and expectations. You want to improve, you, it improves performance in time, costs, and technical areas. We just talked about that. It obtains consistent results through the definition and application of a process across the business unit. Whenever you can define and plan what you're going to do, it's easier to actually do. Even if the plan is not accurate, you can change it as you go. It focuses on managing project scope <coughs> and controlling change. We're going to talk about scope as well. It helps avoid disaster by managing any risks that you might have. And it strengthens project teams and improves morale because they have a sense of a better accomplishment. It improves bottom line performance and could grow the business as well. So if we look at it, initiate, plan, control, close, here's another uh, graphic of that. Project startup, project charter in the initiation phase. Review project requirements, classify roles and responsibilities, conduct a, a kickoff meeting, <coughs> create detailed project plan, assess risk, uh, develop change control process, and approve the project plan. And then in the control stage, it's manage technical performance, communicate the achievements and project status, and even where you are having variances. Uh, manage cost schedule and reduce resource variance. Uh, control all any changes that are happening to make sure they're well documented, well justified, and approved, especially if they are going to delay the project, uh, compromise some of the specifications, or cost more money. Manage the team, management, Manage the customer relationship and the stakeholder relationship. The customer could be an outside entity. The stakeholders could be the people inside your company that are that are, have you know the C level executives, for example. When you close, you want to hand off the deliverables to the customers. Recycle the lessons learned. <clears throat> Celebrate and reward performance. Now, if you look at these things define plan execute close they can happen there's overlap of where they happen planning doesn't stop when you start executing you can start executing at the get-go but it really doesn't ramp up until you have a better you've defined the project well and then you've got a, lot, a, a fair amount of your planning going why does planning continue because if it's the first time you've ever done something uh, you might have to change your plans as you learn more through the execution. Um, you're excavating a building for a building. There was a putting up a big bank in Detroit, I remember as a kid, the bank my father worked at. The project was delayed several months because when they excavated the ground, they found an Indian burial ground, an Indian village and burial ground. Well, all of a sudden, every archaeologist was interested in, um, you know, do we just destroy this or do we bring some archaeologists in and delay our project? Well, you're never going to plan for that. Maybe the next time you build a building, you might want to see is there some way we can ascertain if there are architectural or, you know, archaeological um, things of archaeological value underneath the ground. But they didn't plan for it, so they here they had to do a lot more planning in the middle of executing to get that done. So there, there's an example of a plan changing on the fly. Or we thought we were going to do it um, one way, and then well, as we started executing, ooh, it's going to take another way. Or we thought this was going to take a lot longer than it really took. That's a good thing. That's a good change in plan. Or we thought we could do this in two months. Oh my God, it took six months to do. So you want to do these things simultaneously. Yeah, I don't know that the closing extends that far out. The closing is really more towards the end, but you get the picture in this graphic. So I think we want to talk next about the project chart or project, you know, how to get started. Well, projects and strategies. Mistakes are caused by not understanding the role of projects in accomplishing strategy. You focus on problems or solutions with low strategic priority. You focus on immediate customers rather than the whole marketplace or value chain. You overemphasize technology that results in projects 
that pursue exotic technology that does not fit the strategy or customer need. Uh, you know, everybody wants to do something really cool when you don't need something really cool. I've seen warehouses where we've designed, people have designed a warehouse before I got involved, where what did they do? They had eight different kinds of lift truck vehicles. I'm like, ours is not a complicated business. We don't need eight different types of lift truck. I mean, it's really cool design you have, all this different technology and different racking and different, it just doesn't fit our business. Let's simplify it and do the right thing. So you want to try to solve the customer's issues with a product or service rather than focusing on 20% on the 20% with 80% of the value. So sometimes you trade off and you only focus on that 20% that provide 80% of the value or Pareto's law. Engaging in a never ending search for perfection, um, only the project team really cares about. So you've, this is again where that project triangle, uh, project management triangle comes into place. What's more important, budget, time, or specifications? You need to know that. That will help guide you through some of this strategizing. The other thing is a strategic management process. This is an overview. Requires every project be linked to a strategy and provides themes and focuses for the firm's future directions. Are we responding to changes in the internal environment? Are we allocating scarce resources of the firm to improve its competitive position? So this requires strong links amongst mission, goals, objectives, strategy, and implementation. This is at a macro level. If you're going to be assigned to a project, management has already decided they're going to do it, hopefully. So four activities for the strategic management of processes. Well, you want to review and divine the organizational mission, set long-range goals and objectives, analyze and formulate strategies to reach those objectives and implement strategies through projects. So if you're trying to transform your company, you still got to keep the day-to-day -day business going, but you're trying to improve or change the way you do things. Implement, deciding we need to implement SAP or Oracle or some newer computer system is something like that. We are going to move out of this business and into that business. Well, you need someone to manage that project. I've seen a company, well, I keep using Colgate, let's stick with it. They decided they were going to get out of the detergent business globally and focus more on oral and personal care. So that doesn't just happen by magic. Someone's got to plan it. There's got to be a, a project to make all of that happen. So here's a kind of important questions to answer in those kinds of projects that are transformational to the company. Who and what are we now? What do we intend to be? And how are we going to get there? And when? Who will lead the effort? Who will support the effort? How much will it cost in time and money? And do we have the resources to do this given the goal of time and money that we have? Are willing to allocate to it? So when you're doing that kind of transformational projects, you might do what they call smart objectives. Specific, measurable, assignable, realistic, time-related. Be specific in what you're going to do. Establish a measurable indicator of progress. Make the objective assignable to one person for completion, the project manager. One throat to choke. State what can realistically be done with available resources. So, I mean, you know, you have an objective. I want to become a runner. I want to run a marathon. Um, okay, that's pretty, pretty specific. I want to run a marathon. Measurable, establish a measure, measurable indicator of progress. I want to run a marathon next year in Chicago in 2021. So I better start running now. And I could have a plan and how much, how many miles am I putting in? And you could find a marathon training protocol somewhere. Assignable, make one person responsible. Well, it's only me, so I'm doing that. Uh, realistic, state what can realistically be done with available resources. I want to win the marathon. Is that realistic? No, there's no way at my age and my creaky knees that I'm even going to probably run a marathon. But to set an objective to become world-class is not realistic at all. 
I think a realistic goal for me would be to just be able to enter and finish, time not being a factor. So here, schedule is important because the marathons run on a specific day, uh, and I'm willing to trade off um, the technical specifications. I, I have no, if I, I'd love to run it as fast as possible, but if it takes me six hours, it takes me six hours. Um, time related. State when the objective can be achieved, that is the duration. Well, it's a year long project um, from the start of one marathon to the next. I got so inspired by the last Chicago marathon, I want to run the next one. Uh, management needs a strong project priority. What's the implementation gap? Uh, organization politics and resource conflicts and multitasking. So implementation gap, the lack of not having a good understanding or consensus on strategy amongst the top management means that the middle level functional managers will not have a good consensus on it because it's not imposed upon them. And they are the ones that independently have to implement or coordinatedly and independently have to implement the strategy. So you have to have consensus at the top to be able to do it. And there's a gap always between, even if there's consensus at the top, you may not be able, the middle management is a, is a quirky bunch uh, in terms of, of cultural change or change in the way they do things. They've, they've gotten to a certain place, they want to go higher, and they want to do it by uh, doing what they've always done well. And if you're going to change anything on them, change the rules of the game, they're not willing participants necessarily in that. Organization politics. Uh, so project selection is based on a persuasiveness and power of people advocating for the project. Well, that might mean that my, my function, I'm a VP of something or other, I don't agree with them, and I just drag my heels. Uh, organization politics, I don't trust them. Act like we're going to do it, but then we're not going to do it. Resource conflicts and multitasking. Um, well, multi-project environment creates interdependency amongst all the resources that have to be shared, including those that have to do the um, keep the you know keep the day-to-day -day business running. So you're going to have conflicts here, and you got to be able to manage them, and don't give people more than they can possibly do. Your um, you have to do your full-time job and your half-time on the project. Well, my full-time job requires, as far as I'm concerned, 100% of my time. And you put me half-time on the project, which is 50%. So now I went from a 40-hour job, which really, due to my dedication and workload, takes me 60 hours. And you expect me to add another 20 hours on top of that? Well, I don't know about this. Something's going to give at some point. So you've got to be realistic about those things. And here, we finally get to initiating the project. This is the single most important part. I mean, they're all important. But if you get this wrong, you've kind of sabotaged the rest of the project moving forward. Uh, the project manager, manager has to verify that all the information is gathered. And the project charter is the sole deliverable of this part. Four steps in project management process have inputs and outputs. Inputs include writing written specifications, customer contract, request for proposal, job order, service request, email directives, and other documents. The principal output is the approved project charter. So we're going to talk about that. So here's the, the outline again that we talked about. You'll see project startup. The deliverable is a project charter. The deliverable here, approved project plan. The deliverable here is the finished product, project, obviously, of which you then enter the closing process, uh, handing over the deliverables and then doing the denouement, the unraveling, if you will, from a short story um, parlance, which means, you know, in a recycle, you capture your lessons learned and celebrate and reward performance. So is it a project? Here's a simple checklist, whether you have a project or not. 
Does it have a clear beginning and an end? Oftentimes they're kind of open-ended. When do we start? Do we actually start all together or is it we start like we're all falling out of a car? Is there a specific measurable objective or objectives? Is it a one of a kind effort requiring a customized solution? Does it require a quick response? Does it require coordinating and managing several interdependent elements, organizations, and resources? If the answer to these questions are yes, you have a project and you're in need of project management. I would say if probably if there's five things, if three to four things are, are yes, uh, you have a project. So it's, the startup is relatively simple, but it's ridiculously important also. It focuses on determining who are the key players and understanding the roles and responsibilities of those key players. There's a checklist for this too. Will I do all the work or will others contribute? Let me fix that as well. Will others contribute? Who will be on the team? Who will use the end product? Who will specify the requirements? Is it me or is it the customer? Or is it me and the customers together? Who will approve the final product? Well, certainly I have to as a project manager, but also my stakeholders inside my company have to. And most importantly, the customer has to. Who's paying the bill? The customer's paying the bill. The customer could be someone internal in your organization or it could be an external entity. Do I have the availability And, you know, how, uh, how is the availability of, of resources and do I have the authority to ask for help? And do I have the authority to get people to work on it? So at minimum, identify these players, project sponsor, project manager, key project stakeholders. The project manager coordinates all of these. You have the recipient, which is the customer. You have the project owner, who is the sponsor. And then you have a mess of other stakeholders. Certainly the recipient is the customer. The, the customer could be the project owner, along with a project owner inside your own organization if that project owner is outside, if the customer is outside your organization. Your stakeholders can be in both companies, yours and the customer company or your organization and a customer organization. And then of course you have the team members, which could include customer members. And you could be a project manager, you could be part of the customer, or you could be part of the company providing the results. Uh, So in, in a nonprofit, this was originally a, a question for nonprofit. Nonprofits that North Park deals with, organizations tend to have smaller organizations. Will, will you have all these roles or will all these roles be kind of the same person? Uh, maybe the project owner, stakeholder, and recipient are all the same person, the CEO of your nonprofit. You're like the right-hand man, so you're the project manager, and you have two other team members. It could be that simple. But then a nuclear submarine, you've got the U.S. Navy as a customer. you got the project owner, which is uh, General Dynamics, uh, you know, submarine division, is, is, is the owner of the project. But believe me, there's a Navy admiral also co-owning the project with him. And uh, then you have a variety of stakeholders in the Navy and in General Dynamics. And you have team members, mostly from General Dynamics, but probably also from the Navy. So the sponsors, person who can deploy and reprioritize resources. That's why if you have a big project like a nuclear submarine, you've got someone from the Navy and someone from General Dynamics. And final approval authority, because you probably need both to approve it. And they have to communicate to their senior management. Uh, they appoint the project management manager together. The sponsor may not, uh, the sponsor must be appointed 
If not, the project will fail. You got to have a sponsor. You got to have someone because a project manager can't go to senior management as easily as a sponsor. The, the sponsor, who's probably a member of senior management, you and he needs sometimes he needs that heavy artillery of uh, C level executives to help them. Stakeholders. Well, it's the people that are kind of peers to the sponsor but are not sponsoring the project, but they have to give you resources. They have some equity in how this thing turns out. And so you've got to pay some attention to them. So every stakeholder has a set of expectations. They're not always the same. The expectations must be satisfying to the stakeholders. If not, actions need to be taken either to align their expectations and realign their expectations or make sure that the project is fulfilling those expectations. The project manager needs to be, have relevant experience, competence, knowledge, and skill set to successfully make this thing happen. So he's got to have decision-making ability, ability to energize others. He's got to be flexible. That's the commitment side. On the communication skills, he's got to be he or she has to be a problem solver. The ability to persuade and influence others below you, at your level, and at a higher rank than you. And they have to have some sort of natural leadership ability to marshal the resources. They have to have the customer focus. And they have to be able to resolve conflicts because of that. Because sometimes what the team wants to do and what the customer needs are not exactly the same, so you have to manage those kinds of conflicts. Sometimes uh, the stakeholder doesn't, you know, is assigned several people, but doesn't really let them work on your project. It's a conflict to manage. Uh, and the ability to take initiative and get things done. So he's got to be a go-getter and a doer, he or she. I keep using the word he. So establish the project repository or binder or wall, or project room. But now, most projects are, the repository is done in some sort of IT framework. I mean, you can use MS Teams to run a project and keep all your files on your MS Teams page. Uh, and you can have project management software to go along with it, and it's really amazing. No one likes paperwork, but it's an unavoidable part of the project. And the paperwork, you have to keep track of it either electronically or physically. There was a time before computers, uh, you know, laptops and cloud-based storage and, you know, collaborative software and all that, where if you had a project, there was a project war room. And there were papers and schedules and things taped and tacked all around the four walls of this room. And it was like the nerve center of the project. Well, you can run a project with people being scattered all over the country and world, but you need something to create that virtual war room. So you need a project charter. You need to kick off documentation. You need the project plan, work breakdown structure, project schedule, resource plan, communication plan, change control plan, and a risk plan. You need to have a variety of status reports. You need to have a methodology for change requests and approvals. All meetings have to have some minutes. And, you know, with actions coming out of them, uh, you want to keep your lessons learned uh, at the end, and you want to do a closeout checklist. So before proceeding, what do you need to know? Once all the key players are identified, the project begins in earnest. At this point, the project manager asks him or herself the following questions. What is it we produce and what is the deliverable? Who needs it? Who's the recipient? Why are we doing it? Problem solving and opportunity or opportunity pursuing uh, or building a building or building a submarine or planning a new software, whatever the case may be. Am I accountable for the project's success? If I am not, who is? What is my authority for making this happen? If I don't, who cares? Uh, why don't I have that authority to make this happen? So you've got to find out how much authority you have and don't have. And then the project charter, we've been talking about this a long time, is launched so both the sponsor, the project manager, 
and the recipient knows what it is that you're doing. It's linked to strategy. It's linked to other projects and other operations. The project charter formally recognizes the existence of the project. It's used to identify the sponsor and the manager as well as the stakeholder involved. It can be, uh, lastly, it might include the objective and overall scope of the project. The main element of the charter is shown in the next figures. Here's a very simple example taken from a book. Project name, project sponsor, project manager, who's a customer? Other project stakeholders, stakeholders' responsibilities, what do you expect them to do? Of course, you're not going to fill it out in this little short space. It's just showing you you're going to expand that because it's going to be in a Word document, not photocopied from a book. What are the business objectives we want to do? What are the smart objectives of this project? What are the deliverables? When is the project completion date? What is the budget that we have right now? What are the other assumptions that we need to know? What is the link to strategic objectives and or with other projects? And then we agree that this is a viable project and authorize the beginning of the planning process. The project manager and the project sponsor or sponsors sign off on it. Then it becomes a document that you can go back and say, here's what we agreed to do, here's what we not agreed to do. And if you're changing it, we've got to change the charter, which means changing the budget. Um, it's important. Here's another, other examples you can download of what's involved. Project Charter Worksheet. So, project name, self-explanatory. Project Sponsor, enter the name or names of the individuals who are responsible for authorizing it. Project Manager, enter your name here. <laughs> Customer, either internal or external project. Enter the individual or entity's name here. Other project stakeholders. This is crucial and oftentimes overlooked. Put it in here. All the people that will be affected and that you need their resources to get the project done. They're stakeholders. What are the responsibilities of the stakeholder? Make it very clear to them. Because they're going to see the charter and realize what they have to or not have to do. And if the project sponsor is their peer or their boss, he can remind them, you know, you saw this document. I signed off on it on your behalf. You've got to comply. What are the business objectives? Who, what is the driving force behind this project? Why are we doing it? You write that down in this block. as short or as long as you need to make it happen. What are the objectives? Try to make the project objective or objectives, smart objectives as possible. You know, you want to keep uh, you know, specific. What is this project about? Also, what is this project not about? Because projects always have something called scope creep. You start off trying to solve, um, I'm creating a food bank uh, for uh, a neighborhood in Chicago. And next thing I know, I'm trying to solve world hunger. Projects always expand. It's like the little old lady. She's hired you to paint the outside of the house. And next thing she says, oh, young man. Um, I can't change this light bulb inside. Sure, lady, I'll do it. The next day she says, you know, I've got, I can't open this window. Could you, you know, help me open the window and maybe apply some lubrication if it's a metal window to make sure it slides easier. Yeah, sure, lady, I can help you. Oh, and by the way, I got this like leaky faucet in the bathroom and you're painting the outside of the house. But next thing you know, 20% of your day is spending being the handyman for the lady inside. Um, that's called scope creep. You want to keep those things from happening. You can capture any of those things, pay attention to them, and um, make sure that the list gets passed on to others. But if it's not part of your project, don't do it. Uh, agreed. Get signatures from every stakeholder you know so that... Um, they are on the same page as the project. Realistic, keep the project reasonable and realistic. You know, pie in the sky, no scope creep. Um, because if you if you start off with scope creep, forget it. If you built the the if you've gone to the extent of the scope creep where it would take you, um, you're you've sabotaged your own project at the very beginning. Time constraint. 
What are the beginnings and the ends? Let's define what the goals are. Then if anything changes in terms of scope, in term, which is the specifications, and in terms of budget or time, you can go back with this project management document and say, are we changing this? If you're changing the budget or you're changing the timeline on me, we may have to change the specifications and the, you know, and one or the other, whatever it is, we're not changing or you weren't changing. I made that sound confusing, didn't I? But you get the picture of what I'm saying. What are the deliverables? What is going to be delivered? And sometimes you list what is not going to be delivered. That's oftentimes implied, but sometimes you have to list that out. Include a description of hardware and tangible products, what software is used, identification of any services that will provide it. When do you want, when is the, trying to make the completion date? <clears throat> if a date has not been set, that's a flag right at the beginning. How much money will be used? Do not accept the to be determined. Because to be determined will always be less than you think it should be. Um, list of factors or situations <clears throat> you want to make sure that you will or will not exist as you head into the planning phase. If, if my stakeholders have committed resources to me, I expect those resources on the dates that they committed and fully. And I don't want to have to fight for them again because your job is going to be hard enough managing the project. And lastly, what contributes to project success? Well-defined and agreed-upon objectives, imp impediments to project success, poorly defined objectives. Uh, top management support contributes to success. Lack of uh, executive champion will be an impediment. Uh, strong project management leadership is a contributor. Inability to develop or motivate people is an impediment. Uh, Well-defined project definition, poorly defined project definition, the accurate time and cost estimate versus to the opposite of that, lack of good uh, accuracy and integrity of those time and cost estimates. Teamwork and cooperation, uh, dysfunctional teams. A dysfunctional team will never get anything done. Effective use of project management tools, not using them all at all or ineffective use of them is the opposite of that. Clear channels of communication or poor communication amongst all the team members and stakeholders and sponsors. Adequate resources and reasonable deadlines. Um, you know, unreasonable time pressures and lack of resources. You know, mantra we use at North Park sometimes is you can do anything you want as long as it doesn't cost anything. Uh, constructive response to conflict or inability to resolve conflicts. Well, inability to resolve conflicts and dysfunctional teams go hand in hand. And that's it for this lecture. This is a quick overview, a drink from the fire hose on what project management is. Thank you very much.